Hey guys, this is a short uh, Desmos tutorial. Um, the sort of things that I've picked up just by playing around with it that should be able to help you with your uh, artwork assignment. So I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks that I've learnt, um, and we will make a picture and see if we can make something that looks half decent. So the first thing you want to do is up here, if you haven't made a profile, make sure you make a profile using your school address, email address. That way you can save your artwork and uh, you won't lose it if you um, need to continue working on it another, on another day. Now, up here, it's very important that you first give this a meaningful name. So I could give it face one. I'm going to make a face. Okay. Now, do that first before you do anything. Otherwise, you will lose it accidentally and it won't save from now on it will now save if you need to start something new you can open this up and you can look at the other things that you might have been working on okay now to do desmos graphs is just entering them in like you normally would so if i start with a nice parabola for the chin okay now i want to move that down a bit so i'm gonna minus no, four, five, that looks pretty good. And I might just make it a little bit wider. So 0 0.5, 0 0.67, no, that's 0 0.3. That looks pretty good. But I don't want this parabola going off to it, just going off everywhere. So I need to put some restrictions on the domain or the range. So I'm going to restrict the domain to, we'll say minus three. So I'm going to say minus three is less than X, which is less than three. So these little wobbly brackets here is how we do our domain. And you can see this line is now cut and we've got a nice thing that looks sort of like a chin. Okay. And we'll make this face purple. Okay. All right. We want to do some straight lines for the sides. So we can just write X equals minus three. And you'll see that lines up nicely. But that line goes off forever. So we're going to cut that domain. Uh, this time we're going to cut the range. So we will do, what's this point here? Uh, I believe it's the point about 2.36. So negative, whoop, negative 2.3 less than Y. And we want to make it go up to uh, about one. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, you can always copy and paste things to make things a bit quicker. So I can just change this from three to positive three. Now, the way that I changed the color is by holding down the button here, and then this will bring up these colors here. So I'm holding it down, and then I'm pressing it there. If you want to turn off things, you can just click it once to turn them on and off. All right, so now I might do some hair. And I think maybe the sine graph, whoops, y equals sine x is a nice graph. Okay. Now I could say, no, that's not narrow. Uh, that's not, it's too wavy. I want it more spiky. So I'm going to change this to three, to four, to five. Okay. I could keep trial and erroring here, or I could put a slider in. So I could put A in here. Okay. And now if I click the slider, I can change it and see which sort of narrowness I want. Okay, we could put sliders in for all the variables here. Um, so that would move it left and right, and this would move it up and down. So now I've got this one that makes it narrow. This one makes it more spiky and less spiky. And I can move this one up and across if I want to. And that way I can get it 
just in the right spot just by looking at it. Play around with the values until I get things just right. Connecting with the side of the head can be a little bit tedious. And I might go, that looks pretty good. That's pretty close. And so what I can do now is with these sliders, I can replace the values with the numbers that I've got down here. So that 0.6, I can write 0.6 here. Uh, I can change this to 7.4. And that way these will never be moved around again because I've got the values from down there. And I can get rid of all these sliders because I've got exactly what I want. Okay. But obviously that sign graph goes off forever, so I need to chop it off and we can chop it off the same as those lines before. So minus three is less than X, which is less than three. There we go, some lovely hair and we'll make that orange, of course. Now, I might wanna draw some eyes, circles are eyes, so I can do our graphs for our eyes x minus h to the power of 2 plus y minus k all squared equals r. Again, as soon as these letters that it doesn't recognize pop up, they want you to make sliders. So if you click all here, then you've got sliders that you can move around. Okay, so I just might make that eye a little bit smaller and then I can move it left and right and put that eye in just the right spot, which I believe is there. Okay. And now I can put the values in that I've obtained from playing around. So that'd be plus 0 0.7. And this one would be minus 1.3. Okay, if I can, if I copy that, do another eye, and then I can just move it to the other side Hopefully that'll work if I just change this to a plus. That looks pretty good. We'll make them blue eyes. Fantastic. And get rid of all these sliders. All right, let's make a mouth. So, I might do a parabola mouth, so y equals ax squared plus c. And again, I'm using letters, so I can play around with the sliders here. Get it in just the right spot. Make it a little bit wider. Okay. Now, we don't want that going off forever, so I'm gonna put some restrictions on it, maybe negative 1.5 to 1.5. I find if you work around the axes, then you can make it symmetrical, and it makes it a little bit easier. Um, that's if you're doing something symmetrical. Minus 3.7, 0 0.3. Now, there's a lot of ways to do something on here. These are just the methods that I've found work for me. And what I might do is I'm gonna do a top mouth here, uh, or a top line of the mouth to make a nice, happy open mouth. Like so. Whoop. Just not quite getting that right. You can always play with it up here. Until you get something that looks pretty good. And then you lock the numbers in. Now, Let's say I wanted to color that mouth in. I can use inequalities to do that. So if instead of just making this 
y equals this, I can make everything that's greater than that. And we've got a we've colored in our mouth. Now obviously that goes on forever and we don't want this. We want it to stop below everything below this line here. So what I can do is I can copy this line here and put it up in its own brackets here, but with an inequality going the other way, like that. So that's saying, I want this line, the area, everything above that, but everything below this one here, okay? So that's starting to look good. Now, if you want it to not be a dashed line, you've got to make it less than or greater than or equal to. That will color that line in nicely. Um, okay. I think the last thing I want to do is put some pupils on this guy. So where's my circles from up above? <coughs> it's a nice circle. We'll make this one a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. That was good. And we can move it across a little bit. No, that's the wrong one. This one, 2.1. Yeah, that looks good. He's looking off to the side. And we can do the same with this one. Should be negative. Whoop, we don't want cross side there. So we've got to go the other way. Uh, through the four five. That was good. And we can turn these into equality inequalities to color them in. Or equal to. Now it's okay if you don't have things that are moving. But say you wanted to have some animation in your picture. Let's say I want to make this person's eyes moving back and forth. The thing that changes this is that value there. So instead of doing 1.5, I could actually just add a little bit of movement by putting plus A onto that. And I'll do the same to this one. So now if I've got a slider, now one's going to have to be a, a minus to make that work. So they're both working in the same spots. Now we just want a subtle little movement. So anything from zero to 0 0.4. So if I click down here, I can change my limits of what the slider does. So 0 0.4 to zero, okay? Now this tells me the sort of animation, so I can just have it going in a loop or just going forwards or just going forwards once. And you can also change the speed. Let's have a look, see what it looks like. So she's just looking back and forth a little bit. Let's speed that up a little bit. Okay. And when we press play, we can keep that going. You can make your eyebrows go up or you could make your mouth open and close. You're only really limited by your imagination. That's if you want to do some animation in it. Um, yeah, so we'll just save that. And I think that's it. So go crazy, get creative, do whatever you want. Um, yeah, all right. Talk to you next time. Bye.